uh, from the church. All right. So we're on number, where did we finish off? 31. 31. 31. All right. The city walls and civil government were restored under who? Number 30. But Brett, do you hold this? When the walls were restored under? Yeah, when the walls were. The, when the city walls and civil government were restored under what? Her leader. Well, I didn't hear. What we had, Jim? Was okay, that? number 30 on page number 70. No, I meant. Oh, I'm, we're not there oh, yet. Okay. We're going to get there. Okay. But in the syllabus, we're on page number 70 and number 30. The city walls and civil government were restored under Nehemiah. Yeah, right Nehemiah. Now, Nehemiah. All right, Nehemiah. You want that son of yours to have one of those syllabus? He'd probably write it. Nehemiah or Hamaya or how do you spell it? Nehemiah. N-E-H-E-M-I-A-H. -E -E Nehemiah. All right. Number 31. List several powers Israel was subject to while in bondage. Okay. Number 31. You remember what they were? Assyria, the Medes, and the Babylonians. Okay. Assyria, the Medes, and the Babylonians. All right. And then number 32, list several powers Judah was subject to while in bondage. All right, we're just going a little bit at a time here. Babylonia, the Medes, and the Persians. Babylonia, the Medes, the Persians. And then on, next, on the next page on mine, the Greeks and the Romans. If you look in the book of Daniel, you'll see all of these empires that were going to rise and fall. All right? And number 33, the last prophets of Judah were Zechariah and Malachi. Okay? The last prophet, and last prophecy about 420 B.C., the next prophet to come was who? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Boy, you don't even have a book, and you knew that, didn't you? A plus for today. You see that, brother? All right. John the Baptist, which was over 400 years later. 400 years of silence. All right, so then we'll, when we get started... How many years, I'm sorry, 400 and... Huh? How many years, I'm sorry, 400? 400 years of silence. Oh, thank God. All right. 400 years of silence. Oh, that's golden. Actually, a little over 400 years. Is that the golden age? Huh? Is that the golden age? 400 years of silence. <laughs> silence is gold. Huh? Yeah. All right. And then we'll... We'll just hold on right there. <coughs> We've got a lot of ground to cover here in the Old Testament now. We got up to that. Now go to First Kings. First Kings. All right. First Kings. We're talking about Elijah. What does Elijah mean? The name Elijah. What does Elijah mean? He means God. God. Jehovah is God. Yeah. Jehovah is El. All right. Jehovah is God. That's what his name means. All right. Now let's go here in First Kings, the 18th chapter. Let's go to about number seven, I guess. Number seven. Uh, Brother Norm, are you there? Number seven. As Obadiah was walking along, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognized him, bowed down to the ground, and said, "Is it really you, my lord, Elijah?" Yes, he replied, go tell your master, Elijah is here. All right. All right, number nine now, uh, uh, Brother David. Which one are we on? Nine, well, 1 Kings 18 from verse 9. Okay. All right, now we covered a little bit of those last week, but we need to get caught up, okay? Okay, 18 and 9. Verse 9. And he said, What sin have I committed that you are giving your servant into the hand of Ahab? Ahab. 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 To put what does Ahab, Ahab, Ahab mean? Remember what Ahab means? Father did. something. Like what? Ahab. Huh? Father, Ahab is father. Ahab is father. Ahab. 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 All right. Ahab. His name means father, brother of the father. Brother of the father. Which That's means uncle. 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 Yeah. Which means uncle. Ahab's name is uncle. All right. All right, uncle. That's what Ahab's name means. All right, now let's go on here a little further. Go ahead, David. Just read on down there. And as the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent to search for you. 
And when they said, He is not here, he made the kingdom or nation swear that they could not find you. And now you are saying, Go say to your master, Behold, Elijah is here. And it, can, and it will come about when I leave, leave you that the Spirit of the Lord will carry you where I do not know. So when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find you, he will kill me, although I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. Okay, now as it goes on down there, verse number 13, has it not been told to my master what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, and he had a hundred prophets of the Lord in fifties and caves, and provided them with bread and water, and now you are saying, go and say to your master, behold, Elijah is here, he'll kill me. He'll kill me. He's, he's afraid. Because he knows that Elijah, he knows that Ahab hates him. Elijah said to the Lord, as the Lord of hosts lives, Jehovah Sabiot, Brother Bill, you got your sacred name Bible out there? Yep. All right. Sacred name Bible. You, about to, you almost got in trouble there. Right? I know it. Okay. First Kings, the 18th chapter, and verse 13. 13. 15. 15. 16th chapter. Yeah, 15. 15. 18th chapter, 1 Kings 18 and verse number 15. It should say Jehovah Sabiot. Okay. First, okay, 18, I'm at the 1 Kings chapter 18. Verse 15. Verse 15. Yeah. Then said Elijah, by the life of Jehovah, of hope, before whom I stand today, I will show myself unto him. All right, it's Jehovah Sabiot. They didn't even say it in that book. I, I, they let me down today. Usually they have the right right title letter, Jehovah Sabaoth. By the way, who is Jehovah Sabaoth? Who is he? That's Jesus. When he comes back over here in the tribulation period, he's going to come back with a with a host, his armies, isn't he? Jehovah Sabaoth. He'll fulfill that. Jehovah title. Oh, number 16 now. So Obadiah went out to meet Ahab and told him that Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came about when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said to him, Is it you? He said, that one, is what he literally said, that one, snake, serpent of Israel. That's what he called him, a snake. You ever call somebody a snake or a, or a, 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 a weasel or a rodent? That's what he called Elijah, okay? You troubler. He knew him, didn't he? All right. And he said, I, uh, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord of Jehovah, have followed the Baals. What's Baal mean? Baal's a god. Huh? And Baal god. <coughs> what does his name mean? Baal. Baal. Joe is a name. Joe? <coughs> you don't know what it means. Anybody remember what Baal means? It's not like Baal, like you're bawling and crying. It means a master. 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 It means master. It means possessor. All right. They called. They said he was the the master. All right. Follow the veils. All right. And now he sent up to me to all Israel at Mount Carmel. All right. Carmel means fruitful place. Okay. Together with 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the uh, lesbian gods. The lesbian. Remember Asa in Israel? His grandma was a lesbian and she had a lesbian brothel. Yep. And he shut her down. Yep. Okay? Now these now these people, when they get into this false religion, they get into homosexuality. It's true. Oh, they do. They, even in the Greeks and stuff, that's followed all the way down from all of this ancient worship, they would have a, a female organ on the door, above the door, and if you were a male and you wanted a male, if you were a homosexual, they'd have a male's uh, organs up there above the door. This is horrible stuff. This is what Asa put away in, in uh, Judah, okay? But that's what's going on. They're Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. All right, number 20. So Ahab sent a message among all the sons of Israel and brought the prophets together at Mount Karma. All right. And it's about 1,687 feet high, so this is a high place, okay? That's not high as Mount Whitney or, or uh, as high as uh, Greenhorn Mountain or any of these mountains around here, but that's pretty high in that country. 
So Ahab sent a message among all the sons of Israel and brought the prophets together at Mount Carmel. The prophets of God came there. Okay? And the prophets of the devil. Verse number 21 now. Verse number 21. Brother Bill, you over there? Yeah. Uh, well, 15, 21. 21. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. All right. He said, How long will you limp on both sides? How long will you be in indecision? That's okay. true. What it literally says in Hebrew is limp on both sides. How long will you? I'm limping around here this morning, you know. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Hell. How long will you vacillate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, if Jehovah is Elohim, is that what it says there? Yep. If Jehovah is Elohim, uh, follow Him. If Baal, if your master is God, follow Him. But the people didn't answer Him a single dabar. Dabar. A single word. Not a word. Not one word. Not one ha dabar. Not one word. Okay? Then Elijah said to the people, and remember now, Jehovah is God, that's what his name means. I alone have left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450. And how many were how many was against it? How was he how many was he against? 450. No. There's 450 prophets of Baal. And then four of there's 850 to one now. Pretty good odds here, isn't it? On the devil's side. 850 prophets of hell and one prophet of God. That's right. And his name, God. God. 400 from the one and 450 huh? from the other. Yeah, the, the yeah. lesbians. Yeah, okay. the lesbians yeah, and the homos. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. The lesbian, the homos, prophets. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you like that, don't you? I love this class. Well, that's just the way it is. Yeah, it does. That's just straight out. Yeah. <laughs> Not pulling any punches here. We're just bare knuckling it. Okay. <laughs> then Elijah said to the people, I alone have left the prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450, and I got 400 of the other is 850 of them. Now let, let them give us two oxen. All right. And let them choose one ox for themselves and cut it up and place it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other ox and lay it on the wood, and I will not put a fire under it. All right. This is, okay. Now these are young bulls, is what they are. They're not oxen. An oxen is a neutered, it is a steer. It's a great big steer. They used to use them to pull things with. All right? Now, under the law of Moses, what's wrong with this being an oxen? You could not neuter any animal in Israel. That's against the rules. That was against the rule. God said, you leave them be. They may be easier to handle when they're steers than bulls, but they have a right appropriate. So he said, do not neuter them. Okay, that's this is God taking care of the animals here, alright? He's fair with everything. Alright? So these are young bulls. Now you call upon the name of your God. What's it say there, Bill? In number uh, 24. 24. Yeah, 1824 in that uh, sacred name Bible. 1824. Then shall you call on the name of your idol. <coughs> yeah. I will call on the name of Jehovah, and it shall be the Elohim that respondeth by fire. Okay. You and call Jehovah. upon your little demon god. You know what the word demon means? Demon this means little Demon one. means little god. Yeah, little god, yeah. Little lesser god. The reason the I the reason why demons are called lesser gods is because they are supernatural. It doesn't mean they're a god, but they're supernatural beings. Demons and angels are supernatural beings. They're beyond the normal. This is what we call paranormal, outside of the normal. There's a lot of paranormal things going on in the world all the time. Okay. Then you call upon the name of your demon god, and I will call upon the name of Jehovah, and the Elohim who answers by fire, and the real god, Elohim, the Elohim, <coughs> The real God, Elohim, I better write me. The Elohim. Elohim is the creator. This is the creator God. 
In Genesis 1, it says, at 1, it says, Barashith bara Elohim. That's the word right here. That's the Creator God. The Creator God. The in, creator the God. in the beginnings, it was. Huh? It wasn't, let's see, in the beginnings. In beginnings, created and finished Elohim. Almost at Hashemai, they at Haaretz, the heavens and the earth. All right? So here is the Creator. Let's worship the Creator, he says. Let's worship the Creator. All right? Not some demon god. Not some lesser god. Lay him down. Forget it. Walk off and leave him. Your gods are impotent to help you. That's what he's shown here. Here is the contest of the ages right here. This is the greatest contest, one of the greatest contests of all time. This is a god against demons. Okay? Right over here in the book of Revelation, we're going to have God against demons over here too, aren't we? Who's going to win? The daemonia? Huh? Jehovah Elohim is going to win. All right? You call upon the name of your demon, and I will call upon the name of Jehovah, the creator God, who answers by fire. He is God. He is God. He is Elohim. By the way, that's He there is capital. Every time you put demon down there, it's a lowercase. When you write God, it's an uppercase. When you write God at all in your Bible, anytime you come upon the name of Jesus, if it has a third personal pronoun, he or him, it ought to be all capitalized. Because this is deity. This is real deity. When you come upon Satan, well, you would capitalize his name, but his third personal pronoun is he or him. He's nothing. He's nothing. This is deity here. This is the creator God. Uh, Satan, he's just a he. Demons are just lowercase. The God is uppercase. If it's he or him, it is we need to capitalize him. He is God and all the people answered and said, that is a good idea. That's a good idea. All right. You ever had a good idea? Ford said they had a good idea a lot of times. You know. Remember they used to have an advertisement on television. I would go to people's houses and they'd have an advertisement about Ford and they'd have a light bulb turn on. It's a good idea. You know, Henry Ford one time, uh, he took... Uh, what was the guy that, that invented all those different things? <coughs> Thomas Edison? Uh, Thomas Edison. You know that he got Thomas Edison and he built a, a, a laboratory right there at the Ford factory for Thomas Edison. And he put a whole bunch of people uh, to work there inventing things. He thought Thomas Edison was the greatest man in history. And then when Thomas Edison died, he took a jar and the last breath Thomas Edison breathed, he put it in a jar and put a cap on it. He worshipped Thomas Edison. He thought he was a brilliant man. But here is someone that's worth worshipping. Right here. That's not someone that's worth worshipping. Alright, number 25 now, Brother Nor. <clears throat> Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call in the name of your God and do not light the fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Oh, there are a lot of them. There's 850 of them. He said, choose yourself out of ox. He said, you just pick the best looking one. Best looking bull, that is. And they took the bull, okay? We should say bull there. If it says ox, you put bull in your, because that's what it is. And they took the bull which was given to them, and they prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon. This is morning. This means, uh, this means early morning from daylight until noon. Okay, from daylight until noon. Oh, Baal, answer us. Oh, what's his name mean? Master. Master of the universe. <laughs> Master and possessor. Answer us. And there was no voice. Not, not one, no one answered. And they leaped about the altar which they had made. This is part of their demon worship now. They're leaping about the altar. 
They're dancing about the altar is what they're actually saying. They're dancing about the altar. Now let's see what else these uh, heathens, heathens, as they call them back in Oklahoma. You know what a heathen is? Yeah. Heathen. All right. And it came about at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Call out with a little bit louder voice, uh, for he is a god. Either he is uh, in the outhouse. That's what he said. He's gone to relieve himself. Maybe he's in the outhouse. Maybe, actually, they didn't have too many outhouses back then. They went out there and hid in the woods behind a rock or something. See? Maybe he's out there behind a rock, going out there to relieve himself. See, their gods had, you know, the Roman and the Greek gods, they looked like big people, didn't they? <clears throat> Looked like men. So they had love affairs. The Greek gods had love affairs. They ate, drank, and they relieved themselves, and all of this kind of stuff is like a normal human. He said, Since your God is so human like, maybe he's out there in the outhouse. Maybe he's gone aside. Maybe he's on a vacation. <laughs> maybe he's on a journey. <laughs> or perhaps he is asleep and needs to be woken up. Yeah. Okay? This is a good story here. Now, this is a great story. A great story. Uh, number 28. You've got that biscuit page of Bible in your hand, don't you, Brother Brett? Yeah. You know, you're going to have to grow out of that one this day. I know. When, when, when did you become a biscuit page? <laughs> 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 Go ahead, Brother. Number 28. And they crowd aloud and outcut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. All right, so they cut themselves. They were serious about their religion. Boy, they started slashing and cutting themselves. And the blood was gushing out. They were cutting themselves with swords. They were cutting themselves with lances. And all types of knives and sharp instruments. Until the blood gushed out of them. Number 29. This is Now, this is getting very, very interesting here because we're going to go over to the New Testament. We're going to see somebody doing this in the New Testament. Okay? Number 29, Brother Bill. I want you to read that in the Sacred Name Bible. I want you to tell me what it says there. And so it was when noon was past that although they prophesied until the offering of the evening gifts, yet was there no voice, nor any that answered, nor any that hearkened. Okay, hold on right there. Now, Brother Norm, what translation do you have? NIV. All right, would you read number 29 for me? Midday passed. And they continued their frantic prophesying until the time of the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. All right, Sunshine. Are you on number 29 there? What translation do you have? The same one as the well, same one. I got the same one. Thing you, you, well, I know, but that's... I got the New King James. You got the New King James. All right, New King James. What does this say there? This is, um, and when midday was passed, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. I know Joanne's got a different translation yeah. than all of us. Joanne, what They is? raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but still there was no reply, no voice, no answer. All right. Here's the word in Greek. We get words, you know, all of your medical terms come out of Greek. Did you know that? No, they all come out of Latin. Can anybody read this? I didn't do that alpha there very well there. Can anybody read this? Marilyn, can you read that? Matuminium. 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 All right, let's just, just, just discuss this word. Matuminium. Um, uh, have you ever heard manic episodes? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. What is manic episode? Anybody know? A manic is one of manic depression usually they become depressed. Manic depression? Yeah. Manic episode? Uh, Alright. How many of you, what? Temporary insanity. Temporary insanity. Now there was a, a real popular television movie a long time ago that came out. It was called Lonesome Dove. Mm -hmm. Now there's an old boy that went in there and got so mad at times that he went into a manic episode and they had to rope him, tie him up, drag him off, anybody he'd beaten up. 
Remember who that was? Yep. Captain Watt, Captain Cole. He'd have to, boy, I mean to tell you, he would go and get nuts. He would go nuts. He would be into a manic episode. That's where we get our work. You couldn't abide rudeness. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't abide any man. Uh, rudeness. All right. Can't abide rudeness. All right. Mantis. This is a, we get a manic episodes. All right. Manic episodes. Somebody that gets so mad that they just want to kill everything in sight. You know, some of these drug people, the druggies, okay, uh, they used to carry 38 specials. You remember how all the cops used to carry 38 specials? A long time ago, they carried a Smith & Wesson or a Colt 38 special. Well, after they got to, after people got to eat, taking drugs, they found out that a 38 special wouldn't stop them. Over there in the Philippines, when they're fighting against the Philippines over there, well, wait a minute. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Over there, they were shooting 38 long Colts and 38 specials. When they come up against these people that are all doped up, when people are doped up, I'm going to tell you something, there's demon powers involved in drugs. I'm telling you. There are demon powers involved in drugs. You have supernatural strength when you're all these drugs. Okay? Over in Vietnam, when they get, they get out there and they go on suicide missions and everything else, they take these drugs and you couldn't stop them. Well, over there in the Philippines, they developed the 45 ACP. They say, I've gone to a lot of these self-defense classes and everything for the sheriff's office and everything because I've worked with them for years and, you know, with concealed weapon permits and all this kind of stuff. They say, if you want to stop a man shooting with a 45, if you want to kill him shooting with a 22. All right. If you want to stop a man shooting with a 45, it'll stop him. 230 grain bullets, 240 grain bullets, self fast expanding and everything else, you're going to stop a guy. Okay? People that are in these manic episodes, there's one guy right out here on Pierce Road, that past Pierce Road, it's struck on the boulevard now, out there on that other road that uh, used to be old 99 out there, a cop stopped the guy out there one time and he emptied his 9mm 15 shots into this guy. The guy just kept coming. He grabbed his gun, beat him up with his gun. Beat the cop up with his gun. He walked away from being shot with a 9mm, just like shooting a BB gun at him. They went back to 45s and 40 Smith and Wesson. Now, 40 Smith and Wesson, that, by the way, the 40 Smith and Wesson came from the old 3840 Winchester, which is a 4040. The 40 cal. 4040. Yeah, the 240 caliber. Yeah, it's, it was called a 3840 a long time ago. They came out with a 40 Smith and Wesson from that caliber. And boy, that's a pretty powerful something. will stop these people having manic episodes. All right? They're temporary, insane, and they have supernatural strength. Okay? Now, that's what's going on here. They're not, they're not prophesying. But yes, they are. They are, they are communicating with demons when they're in this manic state. They're prophesying, but did their gods have any power? They were up there prophesying, they were up there raving and going on. What were they doing? Talking in the language of the gods. Go to Acts 16, chapter verse 16. Acts 16, verse 16. I want Joanne to read that for me. I think it should be uh, pretty good. I want uh, Brother Norm to read it. And, uh, One day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a demon-possessed slave girl. She was a fortune teller who earned a lot of money for her masters. She followed along behind us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and spoke to the demon with her, within her. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, he said, and instantly it left her. All right, thank you, Brother Joanne. Joanne and uh, Brother Norm. What's it say over there in yours? Number one, number Acts 16, 16. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we met, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. Okay, now this spirit in her is a spirit of a pithona. Write down pithona. Pithona. What is a pithona? Pithona. 
Python. We got to work Python. Python. What is a Python? What is a Python? A snake. Now, who is the great snake, the great dragon of the Bible? Nahash in Hebrew. Say that. Nahash. All right. Nahash, the great snake in the garden. That's the devil. So this girl had a spirit of Satan in her. One of Satan's followers was in this girl. Okay. Mine says uh, damsel possessed with spirit of uh, divination. All right. The word there is mantua mene. The same word. Brother Bill. The sacred name Bible, they call her a python. That's right. But they command her to come out in the name of Jehovah Shua. Uh -huh. Jehovah Jesus. The what? Jehovah Joshua, which means Jesus. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, it the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Now let's go back. And it came about at midday. It was past that they they prophesied. They went into a manic episode. By the way, what was this girl doing there in the New Testament? What was this girl, this damsel, this little slave girl? What was she doing? She, she was telling fortunes for her masters. Yeah. How would they tell fortunes? Let's go back and look at this one. Through hypnosis. I got to erase this. No. No, because Jesus did that. Uh huh. Well, now God, when He deals with His people, He deals with His people through hypnosis, dreams. All right. Let's look. In the pagan temples, when they went to the temple of Jupiter or whatever, here's a temple over here. All right. You had to go up here to the door of the temple, and they waited in line, like Battle Plaza, <laughs> like Costco. Okay? And over here, in an area over here, they had somebody sitting on a chair. Here's a chair in there, over a tripod, over a hole where vapors came up. Vapors. <laughs> I remember this. Oh, you remember this now? Remember oh, vapors came up. And this person would be sitting on there, and they would get a prophet to come over here, and people would come in and stay in line here for a long time and get their number. Like at the DMV and stuff, get a number. They'd stay in there and they'd wait for a long time, sometimes for a week, to get to talk to a priest. And the priest would go out here and he'd talk to the prophet. Now the prophet would breathe these vapors out there and the, the underworld, the vapors of the underworld, and then he would speak to this person in an unknown language. The language of the gods. Okay? They would come back over there and then even interpret. Like if you came up here and you had lost something. Your uncle had died. He had buried his money out there in a fruit jar under some post in the pasture and you didn't know where to go. And this guy would uh, tell it. And by the way, they got answers. You know how they got answers? From real demons. They got answers from real demons. Here, this girl is over here in the New Testament doing the same thing. The same thing. All right? They would come over here and they would interpret and they would come back. Now, here's the line going in there. And they're going over here like this. And then they have to wait out here for their answer. And they come and then this, this priest here, he interprets what that message was for them. And it cost them money. Lots of money. Okay? Let's go on and look a little bit further now. This is what happened now. Now, they're uh, temporarily insane. They're mad. And uh, verse number 30, And Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he prepared, or he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. There was an altar there, up on Mount Carmel, to the Lord, to Jehovah. What's it say there, Brother Bill, in, in the uh, Sacred Name Bible, number 30? 30 in the Sacred Name? Yeah, 30. And so when it was when noon was past, that although they prophesied into the offering nope, of that's the not 30. gifts, yet there was no voice, no he said that's <laughs> number oh, thirty. Bill. Yeah, I remember. These then said, I'm sorry. Then said Elijah to all the people, Draw near to me, and all the people drew near unto him, then repaired he the broken down altar of Jehovah. Yea, Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob. 
unto whom the word of Jehovah came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. All right, now, what, what, what's different about God's altars and the, the pagan altars? Well, what? I was going to say, wouldn't one give the sacrifice for the animal? No, let's, let's, let's talk about the difference between a pagan altar yeah, yeah, well, and the difference between a one of God's altars. Well, you know, God's altar is wooden. Huh? It's a wooden altar, right? Well, this one out here was, this, 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 this brazen altar is wooden and with brass, okay? Brass grade on it. It was stone, wasn't it? Unless they put 12 stones directly Okay, what kind of stones? Stone. What could the stones look like? <clears throat> Brother Norm, you remember? They'd be round stones? They'd have to be squared off or else they wouldn't stack. Oh, okay. The, the pagan altars were squared off. They were chiseled stones. But not God's. Just around. God's stones could not be made. When you do something to build an altar, when you chisel stones to build an altar, what are you doing with your own hands? Ephesians 2 and 8 says what? Basically creating an idol. You're creating a stone with the hand, work of your hands. Here, when they built the, the tabernacle, they built the tabernacle according to God's plan, but when they built the temple, they could not take one stone, there could not be a sound of a hammer in the city of Jerusalem when they were putting that building together because there was no work that was not a, a workman it, it couldn't be by the work of your hands Ephesians 2 and 8 says what well in Greek it says for in grace you are having been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God our sacrifice is made by God himself God himself came down to this earth and is our sacrifice. All of our works are laid aside. It's God's work alone. It's His finished work that we rest in in salvation, Brother Bill. Brother Bill, when he first started coming to my class, he didn't know what he was saying tonight. When he went to sleep, if he died, he didn't know whether he would wake up in heaven tomorrow or in hell. Now you know about salvation, don't you, Bill? Yeah. You know that you're saved. That's one thing you learned at this church, that he's saved by grace. Well, the pagan altars were made out of fancy stones, all chiseled and squared up and beautiful. And then God's altars, by the way, you couldn't walk up to them either. They had the altar kind of flat. They just took 12 stones and they laid it on that. They laid the sacrifice on the 12 stones. Unhewn stones. They hadn't been squared off or anything like that. But the stones. pagan altars were all fancy. Well, they were making dimensions and stuff. Out of they were natural stones that God had made. And they, they were put in a circle to represent o, Alpha were, and Omega. Yeah, they were. Any, any, any. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's go on now. He took 12 stones, unhewn stones, by the way, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord, the word of Jehovah, Hadabar, the word, the word. Look at that word, word, there. I want you to go now to John 1 and 1. Oh, God. No. Huh? Anybody quote that one in, in Greek right now? I think the logo starts. No, that's 114. Oh. NRK ain't no logos. NRK ain't no logos. In beginning, kept on being a whole logos. There's the logo. Yeah, because the, the word. Because it didn't come out of something. It, 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 it was always there. It didn't, yeah. it, they didn't make it out of something. That's right. And so that's the word point. of Jehovah. And who is the word of Jehovah? Who is the God? That's Jesus. Jesus. That's Joshua. Jesus. All right. To whom the word Jesus said about the Old Testament, what did he say? It says in my word. It says in my word. My word. It's his word. All right. The word of the Lord of Jehovah had come saying, Israel shall be your name. All right. Israel, Prince of God. Number 32, Brother Noah. <coughs> With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it, large enough to hold two shays of seed. <coughs> All right. Twenty-two quarts of seed, about five and a half gallons. All right. Now he's dug, dug a trench around the altar. And verse number 33, Brother Noah. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. And he said to them, Fill four large jars with water, Pour it on the offering and on the wood. Okay, now how many of you ever tried to start a fire with, with wet wood? 
Then we're. Hmm. Guess we're off, isn't it? Right. Joseph, what happened? Smoke, smoke, smoke. No fire. The, the Lord is giving them a handicap, or he's handicapping himself, I should say. Now, they, they're not doing this on the pagan altar. They're doing this on the Lord's altar, the altar of Jehovah. Now he said, uh, and he arranged wood and cut the, uh, the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood and uh, filled these pitchers of water and poured it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And then he said, do it a second time. Do it twice. And then they did it the second time. And then what did he say? Do it a third time. And he did it a third time. All right. Three times. What do you think that stands for? Lots of threes in the Bible in it. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right. The Trinity of man and the Trinity of God. Okay. And verse number 35, Joanne. And the water ran around the altar and even overflowed the trench. Okay. Number 36. At the customary time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and jo Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. At your command, it means ha -debar. At your word. At the word. According to your word. ha -debar. You are the God. You are the Elohim of Israel. All right? You are the Lord, the God, the Elohim of Abraham, okay? The Elohim of Abraham. Here we have, now I said, if God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. We're going to find out what's going on here. That we have the greatest contest of all time. I've done all these things according to Ha the Bar, your word. Jessica, number 37. <clears throat> Answer me, O oh Lord. Answer me, so these people will know that you, O oh Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Okay, Brother Bill, sacred name Bible. Same thing, number 37 now. 37. Answer me, O oh Jehovah. Answer me that these people may know that thou art Jehovah. Art Jehovah, so shalt thou thyself have turned their hearts back again. All right, you are Jehovah Elohim. Number 38. Number 38, now this is pretty exciting. Uh, Brother North. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. All right. Now the fire of the Lord, <clears throat> the fire of Jehovah. That's a hot fire. That's right. The fire of Jehovah. What lit there in Acts the second chapter? What was lighting on top of the heads of those people that were prophesying that day? What was lighting? Like tongues of fire from Jehovah. Back here, when the Lord took possession of this tabernacle, there was a pillar of fire. When uh, remember when Aaron's two sons came up there and they were going up to the ark of the uh, tabernacle with fault with strange fire. What happened there? Fire from the Lord came out there and burned them up. Blistered them. Is that the Shekinah glory? That's right. Is it the same thing? It's fire. It's, it's tremendous. In God is His love. The Bible says, especially in 1 John, God is love. God is love. But God is also a destroying what? Fire. He's the creator. When the, uh, the Lakota, that's the Sioux, you know, the Sioux people, in the morning, the preachers would go out and they would strip themselves off and they wait for the sun to come up, and they just put their bodies against the sun like this, especially in the winter, cold winter day. When it come up, they wanted to feel the power of God. God made that sun, and God made the fire in that sun. And especially out on a cold morning, when the sun comes up, you can feel the power and the heat from the sun. 
You ever get up in the woods, you get up on a cold morning, wait for the sun to come up, and sit out there in the sun. You're experiencing the power of God himself. God lit that sun on fire. He lit that sun on fire. Well, here we have the, uh, the power of God coming down. And fire from Jehovah fell and consumed the burnt offering. The wood that was wet, he burned it up. And the stone. How many of you have ever seen a stone burned up? How many of you have ever seen a, a stone in a fire. They, what happens to some explode. stone? They okay. explode. Thank you, brother. They explode. Stones and fire explode. Now there's some snap, crackle, and pop going on top of this mountain. Sound like bombs going off. Think about that for a while. The stones are popping and burning. Any of you ever heard of a volcano explode? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty loud, isn't it? I never heard one, but I mean. no. <laughs> they explode. What do you think about St. Helens? Uh, yeah, that, that, that was a loud explosion, I'm going to tell you. Was that in By the way, was that in 80? It was, back, it, was, it was back a few decades. I was around then. I was around. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't quite as around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little levity. Well, when Mount St. Helens blew up, boy, we had some cold winters after that, didn't we? And we just happened to have a, for the next few winters, we are uh, right up there in, what's it, Iceland or Greenland? Mm -hmm. that, that volcano was blown up there and they couldn't even oh. fly the airplanes through it, all the dust. We expect a cold winter this year because of that. And some real heavy rainfall up there because of that. Well, here we have a, a natural... A natural... Placement up on top of this mountain, we have sacrifice that's soaked with water. We have stones that are soaked with water. We have wood that's soaked with water. And we have a paranormal event taking place up here. We have fire licking up the water, burning up the wood and burning up the sacrifice. And even the stones are exploding. And we've got some bombs going off on top of Mount Carmel. What do you think about this? What do you think was taking place over there with the prophets of Baal when it was going on, Brother Ray? Oh, they must have been um, really thinking they're stupid. I think I don't know, but you know what? They already believed in something stupid, so I don't know. Well, they were believing, weren't they? Have you ever tried to shake somebody's belief in false religion? Yeah. Have you ever, Brother Bill, you deal with these old witnesses all the time. You know what holds them into that religion? Demons with their tentacles. <laughs> stuck into them huh. with their claws holding on to things. And demons use when you get out of a false religion, when you get out of a false religion and you're born again and you are saved, that's a miracle of God. That's a miracle as powerful as what's going on top of Mount Carmel with the fire coming down and, and lapping up the water and the stones and the wood. Brother Bill. Where, where God uses love to hold a Christian together, the cults use, use fear. 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 The demons use fear. Right the opposite of what they Yeah, fear is rules. Afraid. Fear, if you want to design a cult and identify a cult, they are held together by fear. fear. Hell fear. And they don't want to hear what you've got to say because... They're, they're afraid, afraid to hear what you, to hear say. what you got to say. They're afraid they're going to offend their imaginary God. I know, they tripped out of me. They get out of their car and smoke them out of there. Right, right, number 39, <laughs> Brother Bill, would you read number 39, the last part of 39 there? Yes. And then when the people saw it. And when all the people saw it, they fell upon their faces and said, Jehovah, he is Elohim. Jehovah, he is Elohim. All right. Jehovah, he is the creator. Jehovah, he is creator. All the people around there saw it, and they became believers. They became believers. Then it got ugly in verse 40. Oh, yes. It, it gets ugly. ugly in verse 40. Uh, uh, sunshine. Jessica. Number 40. Then Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley. The Kishon. And slaughtered, and slaughtered there. He yeah. slaughtered them there. Yeah. Now, that word, the slaughter there, means just like they slaughtered the sacrifice. Verse 40 is not rated PG-13. No. 
No, well, that's not PG. All right? That's not G either. God, you know, what, what's God going to do with all of humanity that rejects Him? File 13. What's file 13? The trash can. The trash can. The lake of fire is file 13, people. File 13. That's right. That's file 13. A lot of people today, they don't, they don't want to hear about hell. No, they don't. A lot of churches, you'll never hear the word hell used in them. But hell is a real place. It's a real place and it's an eternal place. Aren't the Catholics and the Baptists some of the only ones that believe actually believe in hell? They actually think it's real? Well, all of the cults don't. Your Seventh-day Adventists don't believe in hell. Your Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in hell. Your, your uh, Worldwide Church of God, what armor, Ar Garner Ted Armstrong and Herbert Armstrong and all of their offshoots and in inshoots and outshoots, they don't believe in hell. Does the Mormon believe in hell? Mormon Mormons believe in hell. don't believe in hell either. Okay, yeah, okay. They want to do away with it. That's something that's not a comfortable. It is what they call the unspeakable word in Christendom today. Now Elijah said to Ahab, Uncle, get up. What? What did he say, Brother Norm there? What did he say? Get up and what? Go, eat, and drink. For there is the sound of a heavy rain. There is a roar of a deluge. Get up and eat and drink, Ahab, old uncle. Now what should Ahab have done here? He is the king of Israel, which is basically the northern uh, kingdom of, of the land. God is dealing with them. He even sent them a prophet. Now these are the ones that split off from Judah. Okay. Didn't he want to get eaten by, by dogs? Huh? He's the one that got eaten up by dogs. Well, yeah, he's, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. We're going to talk about dog food. <laughs> how, many, how many of you have dogs? Do you have dog food? Now, this is dog food. Okay? Dog food. Old dog food. The dog face boy. Calm down, calm down. You're getting ahead too soon. Number 42. So, what you have went to eat and drink, but Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel and he crouched down to the earth and he put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. So he went up and he looked toward the sea. And by the way, you can look toward the sea off of Mount Carmel. I've been there. There is nothing. And he said, go back seven times. Seven is the number of what in the Bible? Perfection. Perfection. Shiva. Shivaim. Say Shiva. Shiva. Shiva, seven in Hebrew. Shivaim, the seventh. All right. And it came about in the seventh time that he said, Behold a cloud as small as a man's hand is coming up from the sea. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down so that the heavy shower does not stop you. And he's being kind to this buzzard, isn't he? This ungodly buzzard. This snake in the grass. He's being kind to it. So it came about in a little while that the sky grew black and the clouds and clouds and wind and there was a heavy shower and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and outran Ahab to Jezreel. Steroids. He outran, he outran his, uh, what? Steroids. Yeah. He outran Ahab to Jezreel. Ooh, he outran the chariot. He was in a chariot. Yeah. He outran the chariot. He outran the horses. When God empowers a guy, he empowers him. What we're going to start right there in, in chapter 19 next week. I hope you enjoyed God's Word. Thank you for being here and enduring those hard seats. God bless you. Do something eternal this week. Brother David, what do you have for us here? A couple of prayers. What up, Dakota? Bust anybody up this week? Huh? Bust anybody up this week? <laughs> no, no fun? No. Okay, on our uh, list of prayers and praises, today, Brett and Joe would like us to uh, pray prayer.